Hey guys, welcome to our online service. It's so good to be able to welcome you on this Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday. And uh, bless the Lord, we miss you moms. We miss everybody physically, but even though we're not in a physical building, we are still the church. We're still gathering together as the body of Christ throughout the city, throughout the land, and it's a delight to be able to do so. Just to say, moms, that we had uh, lovely chocolates to be able to give you today, uh, but unfortunately, we're not together. So Pastor Des thanks you. He's eaten half of them already, and uh, he's just so blessed by your generosity. Um, we're about to go into time of worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, our moms have great love for us, but there's nothing compares to the love that our God has for us, and that love is directed towards us during this time. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God to bless this service. And I pray that wherever you're watching and whatever circumstances you find yourself in, that you'll be mightily blessed by this service to the glory of God. So Jesus, we thank you this day that we can come into your presence. We thank you that we can gather to worship you. We thank you that we can gather in our homes and we can gather through the internet just to be able to praise together and be blessed together. Lord, we want to particularly bless the moms today and just thank you for their lives, for their courage. Lord God, for the grandmothers, Lord God, for all those, Lord Jesus, that are on our hearts that we miss, that are like spiritual moms and grandmoms to us. And so, God, we just give you the service and we ask that you use it and speak through it, Lord God. May you have all the glory and renown and fame through this service, Lord God. You are our King of kings and Lord of lords. Bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen.
Come on, let's declare this together. The Jesus name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call his name. In Jesus name above every other. Oh, hail the power of Jesus name. In Jesus
Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your goodness, Lord God. We just want to continue to stand on the scripture that we've been standing on since first we got news of this virus that was spreading around the land. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Father, we want to continue to stand on this word. We want to continue to stand on your faithfulness and on your protection and on your love. And Lord Jesus, we pray right now for any people that are watching and connecting to this service. Lord God, that you would just alleviate fear and that, Lord God, instead of fear, that faith would grow, Lord Jesus. Instead of anxiety, dependency upon you would grow. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much that you're with us, that you're for us, that you're a good, good father. Lord God, we want to thank you so much that even on this Mother's Day, on this Mothering Sunday, Lord God, that we can rejoice in the love of one who never fails us and he's always there for us. We can recount the deeds of our moms and how good they've been to us. But Lord God, that pales in comparison to your faithfulness, your goodness, your love directed towards us. Lord God, we want to continue to plead the blood of the Lamb, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice on the cross, Lord God. Uh, and Lord Jesus, we just reminded, Lord God, of the Passover that was brought to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. But also, Lord God, we're reminded of that first Passover and those families applying the blood of the Lamb over their households. And God, we do the same. We apply the blood of the Lamb over our households that, Lord Jesus, this pestilence will pass over. Lord God, we want to thank you so much that you're just so good to us, Lord God. And when we recount your deeds and think back of the times and the years that you've been so with us and so faithful to us, Lord God, it just takes our breath away. But you're the same God today as you are then, and you're going to be the same God tomorrow. And so, Lord Jesus, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in the fact that you're our God and that you're so good to us. And we bless, Lord God, each other. I pray, Lord God, that you continue to use us as your kingdom carriers, as we pray for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. I pray that you'd use us, Lord God, to love on people, to bless people, to help people, to care for people, to watch out for the weak and the infirm, to keep an eye on the elderly. Lord God, to be people that really are kingdom carriers and kingdom bringers in this season. So God, we want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for this time of worship. And we just rejoice that even wherever we are right now, we can all access the same presence of God as everyone else. So thank you for your presence and thank you for your love and your faithfulness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Guys, again, it's so brilliant to have you. And Thank you to our worship team and thank you to our technical team that are here just to help us bring this to you. We're so grateful to these absolute legends. Uh, we would ask that you would continue to pray for the other legends that are serving our nation at this time, thinking of the people in the hospital services and continue to pray for all of those that are in hospitals and in tech labs, uh, looking over samples or those indeed in various locations around the country taking samples to see if people have COVID-19 or not. And just that God would be with these people, that the protection of God would be on them. Just keep praying that they would be mightily blessed in their giving and in their serving. We want to pray and continue to pray for the leaders of the land. And, you know, we want to lift up our Taoiseach and uh, the governments, and we want to 
lift up the people who are business leaders, uh, HSE leaders, all of those who are being impacted and having to make massive decisions in a season that they never thought that they would have to be making such decisions in. So let's keep all of these people in prayer. Let's continue to pray for each other, for our neighbors, and keeping an eye out for those, as we say, that are weak and just need, need, need our help. This is a great opportunity for God's children to shine their light and to be salt in the midst of this very, very uh, distasteful situation. So we just ask for God's blessing as we proceed. We just have a couple of announcements before uh, Pastor Des comes to bring God's words to us today. Uh, the first one is that very soon we're going to be rolling out a program as a church whereby you will be able to connect with us uh, in various formats and feel part of the family even though we're not physically together. Uh, we really hope that you're enjoying the daily devotionals. We know you're tuned in, that you're enjoying the Sunday services and we're going to stay committed as long as we can to be able to bring these to you. With all of our hearts, we pray that you're blessed. But we're also looking at doing a, a Monday night Bible study. We're looking at doing uh, virtual life groups on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We're looking at doing prayer hubs on Thursdays. Uh, we're looking at connecting our youth on Fridays. Uh, and all of this is going to be rolled out with much more certainty uh, over the coming days. And so we would ask you to keep an eye on Instagram, keep an eye on Facebook, go to St. Mark's Church on both of them, and you'll find us, and you'll see the updates. And please, God, we'll get all of these up and running so that we have daily connection points within the week for you to feel like part of the family. And uh, we're praying that that's going to be a massive blessing to you. If any of you have any needs, some of you have lost your jobs, some of you are stressed out because you just don't have the means to keep going uh, financially or practically. And so we would direct you to our email address, office at stmarks.ie, and we would ask you to send in your need request. And in whatever way we can, we will endeavor to help you. Uh, you can imagine at this time that there's quite a bit of need out there, but we are committed to helping in the best way that we can. And so please keep those needs coming in to us, office at stmarks.ie, but also keep the prayer requests coming in. It's been so encouraging to see people sending in their prayer requests. It is a privilege for us to be able to send these prayer requests out to our church people to keep praying for you and to keep standing with you uh, in this journey. Uh, and then lastly, just to say, this sounds like a put on and this sounds like something that, oh, I knew they were going to get to this point. But genuinely, we have been so blessed by and encouraged by the people that have been getting on to us saying, now that I'm not physically coming in, how do I give? And so we would just direct you to our website uh, and there's a link there that you'll be able to connect to in order to give, uh, to bless the church and to make sure that we can continue being the church. Uh, please God for long into the future, however long this takes before we're back together physically. So thank you for those inquiries. And as I say, uh, on the website, you'll be able to connect uh, with online giving. Uh, so bless you for that and thank you for that. So praise the Lord. We're now going to move into a time of the word and uh, Pastor Des is going to come with a great message. I know you're going to be blessed. Fantastic. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, worship team. Amazing job just leading again, and we're so grateful. And happy Mother's Day. And uh, don't believe what Sean said. Um, I haven't taken any of the chocolates. They're all in the Malarkey household out in Lucan. So uh, you can, and hopefully when this is all over, we'll celebrate Mother's Day. And uh, just to echo Sean's sentiments, we are so blessed by all the mums. Um, our, our hearts, our prayers are with you today, particularly the grandmothers as well. Um, it's great to see uh, grandkids connecting with grandmothers on Skype or FaceTime, and, and uh, just really encourage you to keep doing that. Um, God is good. Guys, I want to jump straight into the scripture God has put on my heart uh, this morning, and so we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to be reading from verses 19 to 25, and, and hopefully the scripture will be on your screen so you'll be able to read along with me. Also, before we read this scripture, just let you know, at the end of this service, we are going to break bread together. Uh, we'd said this last week, so hopefully uh, you can have a bit of uh, uh, communion ready, some uh, juice, some, some, some bread, and we're going to share communion together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus... 
by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain. That is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as, the day, as we see the day approaching. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Before we get into this, obviously that last part, let us not give up meeting together, is very difficult in these days of social distancing and uh, trying to isolate ourselves away from crowds of people. But uh, it's just really encouraging that we can still meet together in the online world, in the virtual world. And all of Sean's announcements really encourage you to just keep checking, keep looking online, how we're going to be connecting with each other, how we're going to doing church in this new way um, that we, just because we can't gather together, we're still the church and we're still going to meet together um, and encourage each other and pray together and strengthen each other. And so this word that jumped out at me, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence, since we have confidence, have you got confidence today? Has your confidence been rocked? I know mine has over these last few weeks. Have you got, what is our confidence in? The word confidence literally means this. It's the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. Some of the other words that uh, are confidence is trust, belief, faith, conviction, reliance, dependence. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence, it wouldn't be a stretch to say over these past few weeks that our confidence has been rocked. That person who sneezed close by you, or that person who's coughing, or, or maybe that person standing too close in the line, or, or maybe, maybe that you've lost your job this week, or maybe your, 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 your confidence is, gosh, will I be able to hold on to my job, or will I be able to get my job back when all of this is over? And again, I don't think it's a stretch to say that our confidence is being rocked in these days. But I want to begin this morning by just reminding you and reminding me that our confidence is not in these things, although these things are important. Our confidence is in the Lord. Our confidence is ultimately in God. He is our rock. He is our assurance. He is our peace. He is our joy. He is our hope. He is our comforter. He is our strong tower. He is the lover of our souls. He is our confidence. And it's so important, as the writer of Hebrews says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence, we have this confidence that goes beyond our circumstances, that goes beyond what's going on around us. Our confidence is not in these things. Our confidence is in the Lord, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paul says this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident in this, listen to the Apostle Paul, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you, amen, he who began this good work is faithful and will bring it on to completion unto the day of Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul is confident in this. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter from a prison not knowing whether he's ever going to get released, not knowing whether, where his next beating is going to come from or whether he's going to be brought out in the morning to be executed for his confidence in the gospel. He doesn't know what tomorrow holds. And yet he's encouraging the church in Philippi. Brothers and sisters, I'm confident of this, that God who began the good work is faithful to bring it into completion. He is, a still, he is still our good, good father. He is still faithful he is still on the throne of our lives. And just how fear and anxiety and stress may be on the increase. You see, these things are contagious. But you know what else is contagious? Confidence is contagious. And I want to encourage us this morning that our confidence is in God. Your confidence is in Jesus. And he is faithful to bring the work that he began in you unto completion. When I think of this word confidence, and I try to think of examples of confidence, I can't look any further than the life of Paul. 
When I think of this man who, when he started off in, in, in the book of Acts, we see him as Saul, and he is this, he's this man who's devout towards God, but yet he's so angry towards the new church because he sees it as a sect. And, and he's, his, his life's ambition is to tear down the church and to destroy the church. And he begins to round up people and put them in prison, and they're tortured for their faith. And this was Saul. This, and, and then God intervened in his life. And literally, you see, when God intervenes in your life, everything changes. When God takes a hold of you, everything changes. And, and Saul's life completely was turned upside down and inside out. And he became the Apostle Paul. And he went from this person who went persecuting the church to planting churches, to bringing this amazing gospel, this amazing hope to every town, every village, everywhere he went, he would bring this message and lives would be transformed and people would be set free both physically, emotionally, spiritually, would be brought into this brand new life. But not everyone was happy with Paul. You see, the religious leaders weren't happy with Paul because he was upset in the status quo. You see, there was a system in place that people had to go through this system in order to approach God. And Paul was bringing a message saying, no, that system's broken because of Jesus on the cross. And that the way to God is now open for everyone. And this really annoyed the religious leaders. The economic leaders were annoyed with Paul because he was coming in and again saying that you don't need to worship these graven images. You don't need to worship these things. And again, this was putting people's livelihoods at, 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 at at odds. And so they were annoyed with Paul. And the political leaders were annoyed with Paul. Because Paul was saying, Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. We don't worship man, we worship God. And they were annoyed with Paul. And they kept, Paul, you need to shut up. You need to stop bringing this message. And, and Paul was just, Paul was constantly saying, no, I can't. I can't stop giving this message. Well, Paul, if you don't shut up giving this message, we're going to throw you out of town. You're going to be excommunicated. You can't be here anymore. Okay, if that's the way it is, I'm still going to bring this message of hope, of salvation, of God's grace and God's love. But Paul, if you don't stop giving this message, we're going to beat you. We're going to, we're going to come against you. We're going to beat you and torture you. And Paul says, well, if you do that, that's okay, because I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. But Paul, if you don't shut up, we're going to throw you in prison. We're going to lock you up, but I'm still going to bring this message because I'm confident that this message is the hope the world needs to hear. And so you lock me up, I'm going to preach to the prisoners and to the prison guards. And their lives are going to get transformed. But Paul, if you don't shut up, we're going to kill you. Well, you see, the Apostle Paul would reply and say, well, for me to live is Christ. If I go on living in this body, I'm going to live for Jesus. And if you're to kill me, well, that's to my gain. So whatever you choose to do, I'm confident that my God is able to keep me and sustain me and to bring me on to glory. You see, Paul's confidence wasn't in his circumstances. He learned this. He says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. My brother, my sister, let's take hope of that scripture, that we can do all of this. The actual translation translates that we can endure all things through Christ who gives us strength. You see, we have an enemy, and his job is to come and try to rob us of our confidence. But we have a God who is greater and speaks a greater word and a greater promise. And his promises are still yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So whatever your circumstances this morning, and we're all living in a world that is full of fear and full of anxiety, and we don't know what way this is going to go. And our hope is that this season will be over quickly, but we don't know. But my brother and sister, your hope isn't in these things. It's in Jesus. And I want to remind you this morning that our confidence is in Christ. Hebrews 10 goes on, let us not throw off or let us not throw away our confidence because it will be richly rewarded. Do you know when you're shown confidence in God, people are looking at your life. People are wondering, why have you got peace when all around is falling apart? Why have you still got joy in your life? Why is there still hope in your life? And it gives a great opportunity for us to say, do you know what, it's not us, it's Jesus. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Can I tell you about him? Can I encourage you about him? Can I share him with you? You see, we have confidence in God. 
And because we have confidence in God, going back to our, our scriptures our earlier on, in verse 22, it says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. You see, because our confidence is in God, we have confidence to draw near. Our confidence is to draw near to God. In a world where we're becoming more and more familiar with phrases like self-isolation and social distancing, which is so wise at this moment, we don't want to go around infecting each other with this virus. But let's not use these words in regards to the things of God. Let's not self-isolate from God. Let's not distance ourselves from God. Actually, now is the time where we draw in more. Now is the time where we lean in more to him. Now is the time more than ever where we let him carry our burdens, our stresses, our anxiety, the things that try to rob us of the peace of God or the confidence that we have. Let us, let us draw in and draw close to him. Give him our fear. Let his love, his perfect love fill your heart. As you draw in, lean in. When his love fills your heart, he drives out fear. Perfect love casts out fear, as the scripture says. Let us draw in towards him. Because we have confidence also in God, it allows us to have confidence to hold on. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Brothers and sisters, let us hold unswervingly. Let us hold rigidly. Let us not give up the hope that we have in Jesus. This word unswervingly means to be determined in your, in your holding on. It means that you're immovable in this hope. It means that we're holding on to these truths, that God is good. Amen. God is still good. He was good yesterday. He's good today, and he's good tomorrow. We're holding on to the hope that God is faithful, that he who began the good work in you is faithful to bring it into completion. We're holding on to the hope that God is still on the throne. That no matter what happens in our world, God is still in charge. He is still on the throne. We're holding on to the hope that he still has a plan and a purpose for his church on this earth. That God can still work all things for the good of those who love him. Even in the midst of the days that we're in. God is the one who works all things for the good of of those who love him. So we have confidence to, to draw in, to draw close. We have confidence to hold on. And thirdly, we have confidence to press on. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. But Des, we're all, we're all at home. How can, we, how can we do love and good deeds? Do you know, I'm so blessed by the response of the Irish community at this time. It's so encouraging to see tens of thousands of people signing up online for voluntary work or signing up to work in the HSE at this time to give relief to our doctors and nurses. It's so encouraging. And, and if I want to use a phrase, and I know I'll probably get into trouble from using this phrase, I'm proud to be Irish at this time. I'm proud to see the response of our communities putting Facebook groups together, WhatsApp groups together that will, that will support each other and care for each other. But you know what, guys? I'm so proud of the church as well. Because we're at the forefront of this and we should be at the forefront of our response to this. This is not a time for the church to be in retreat. This is a time for the church to advance. This is a time for us to go forward. This is a time where we should be at the forefront of helping our communities. Not only speaking life, but also being the hands and feet of Jesus in this time to our neighbors and to our friends and to our family. There's so many struggling with fear, so many struggling with anxiety, with loneliness. And you, my brother and sister, have the hope of God in your life, the voice of peace that could be down the end of a phone call, the wisdom of God that may be extended through a text or an online post. Let's keep on keeping on. Let's keep pressing into all that God has for us in these days because he has amazing things for his body, amazing things for his church, amazing opportunities. Isaiah 60 says this, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness are over the peoples. What a scripture to describe what's happening in our world, not only in Ireland, but in our world at this time. You see, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You see, even in the midst of darkness, the light of God shines brighter and brighter 
and brighter. I want to show you a photo. My wife took this photo a, a, a few weeks back. Uh, it's of daffodils. And, and this was literally, be, this was before all of this news broke. I think there was, we were watching this from a distance over in China. And we were, maybe a few cases had come to Italy. And, and, and it was still a distant thing. But now it's on our doors. I think this post that she put up a few weeks ago is so apt. And I want to just read the quote to you as she put it up of these daffodils. She says, I wish I had the eloquence or words to describe how spring impacts my heart and soul. The relentless reminder that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The hope that each fragile yet stubborn new blossom holds has been hidden deep in the dark throughout winter, but it now bursts forth with such brightness that it grabs your attention. The persistent reminder that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Thank God for hope. Maybe this morning you're feeling a little fragile. Maybe this morning you're feeling a little just shaky and your confidence is being rocked. I want to encourage you that the strength of God and the grace of God and the Spirit of God is rising up in you at this time. You see, arise and shine for your light has come. And when the light of God rises up in us and we take hold of that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of us, then our confidence isn't in, the, in our circumstances. Our confidence isn't even in how we're feeling at the moment. Because sometimes our feelings are, are shaky, but we put our confidence in the Lord, in His promises. And when we do that, we begin to shine brighter. We begin to blossom. And the church is shining bright in these days. Psalm 27 Verse 13 finishes off with this. He says, I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I remain confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe as we draw closer to God, not distancing ourselves or isolating ourselves from him, but pushing in and drawing closer to him. I believe as we hold on to him with everything that we have, and I believe as we're holding on to him, more than we're holding on to him, he's holding on to you. And he has a grasp of you, and he will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. But as we draw closer, as we hold on, and as we press on into the things of, of God, I believe more than ever, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We have confidence in him. And finally, as we break bread together, we have confidence to break bread. Hebrews 10, let's read our, our, our main scriptures today. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a, sorry, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Maybe not physically, but online. Let us consider how we may spur each other on. Not giving up meeting together. Again, not physically, but we're going to meet together on in, in all our online platforms. Let us keep on keeping on. Amen. Before we, we share communion, guys, I want to just take this opportunity. Because I don't know who's listening. I don't know who's watching. I don't know who's tuning in this morning or even during the week. And the Lord bless you. And I pray that this service, this worship time, these songs, this message has really blessed you, has really encouraged you. But before we break bread, I want to give everyone an opportunity. Because maybe you're listening in and maybe you're hearing me talk about peace with God and joy with God. And you're like, I don't know that peace that you're talking about. Well, I want to encourage you. It's simply you inviting Jesus into your life. You see, God is a gentleman. He's never forced himself on. He's never, he's never pressed into anyone without invitation. We simply invite Jesus into our lives. And at this time, I think it's so important that I would extend this opportunity to you to invite Jesus into your life because he can be the peace that you need at this moment. He can be the joy that you need in your life. He can be the hope to hold on that goes beyond our circumstances. He is the savior of the world. You see, John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world 
That's you and me. For God loved the world. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. And that everlasting life isn't just speaking about eternity. It's speaking about right now. That we can have life in all of its fullness in the midst of such horrendous circumstances. And so I want to encourage you as you're watching. You could simply just pray, Lord, I just invite you into my life. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I'm a sinner, chief among most, and I just, I repent of all of my sin, and I give it to you. And you see, as you give Jesus all of the hurt, and all of the guilt, and all of the shame, and all of the effects, and all of, the, of sin, as you give that to him on the cross, do you know what he gives you? He fills you with his love. He fills you with his peace, with his joy, with his hope. He gives you his righteousness. There's a great song, it's called The Divine Transaction. And this is exactly what happens when in faith, we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. This divine transaction happens. The Spirit of God literally comes inside of you and makes you alive, makes you born again. Again, a phrase that's so misquoted and misunderstood, but it means that you become alive in your spirit. And I encourage you to do that. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this piece of bread that we hold, Lord God. And even though it's a piece of bread, we want to thank you for all that it represents. We want to thank you for the body that was broken on the cross in our place. Jesus, we want to thank you for the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross. And what was that joy? That joy was seeing people come to you, Jesus, come to faith in you, come to life in you, having hope in you, coming back into full relationship with your Father. And so we want to thank you, Lord God, for the joy, for the multitudes that would come before you, for the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross, your body that was broken. Lord, we thank you for the body that was broken. In Jesus' name, you may take the bread. Lord, we want to thank you for this juice or wine, again, that just represents so much, that represents the blood that was shed. As the old hymn says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you that it's your blood that has made a way for us to have relationship with your Father. That in these times, we have a friend who is closer than a brother. We have a Lord who will never leave us or forsake us, who gives us enough grace, who lavishes his love upon us, whose mercies are new each morning. And all of this was achieved because of your blood, Jesus. And so we thank you, Lord God, as we break bread together, as we do communion together, Lord God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you so much for partaking. This way we're doing church, new church. We thank you. Again, just encourage you, as Sean has already said, get online, get onto social media, spread this to your friends, your neighbors, whoever you can, the different services, the Bible studies, the prayer times we're going to be having. I just pray that God would bless you, God would keep you, God would cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name, God bless.